bags. Hey gang, in this video we're gonna talk about the second adjusted entry, what happens to be depreciation. So depreciation is very unique because of the important effects it has on the financial statements. And by the end of the video, you're gonna be able to depreciate assets like it's nobody's business. It's about damn time. It's about damn time. So, before I provide you with a definition of depreciation, let's take some time out to talk about what needs to get depreciated. There are certain particular accounts that must get depreciated from the company standpoint. And what accounts are I'm referring to? Assets that we plan to keep longer than a year that helps us generate our revenues. And so what type of accounts, long-term assets am I referring to? Equipment, furniture, building. And so what happens with these assets as time goes on once initially purchased, wear and tear begins to take its place. And so when the wear and tear process takes place, the value of those particular assets must go down. Henceforth, the depreciation process. And since depreciation happens to be an adjusted entry, we depreciate our long-term assets at the end of the period, particularly a year. And so by definition, depreciation is simply a process that lowers the value of certain long-term assets through time. And where does this process actually show up on the reporting side of the spectrum? On the balance sheet. And so what we're going to do is illustrate how to properly record depreciation and how it shows the effect of those long-term assets on the balance sheet in the next example. So without any further ado, let's take it to the board. Okay, gang. So... We are going to now look at an example of how to appropriately depreciate an asset and how does it appear on the financial statements. What you need to understand is that certain particular long-term assets are depreciated, right? And so it means because of time and wear and tear, the value of that asset must go down. So let's identify an asset to be depreciated. On January 1st, Suppose It's a Joke purchases a building for $100,000. Now, keywords in this initial transaction for the asset to be depreciated, purchases a building, pretty much, right? And so, how are we going to record that? Well, building is an asset and it's going up, so we're going to debit building for $100,000 and cash as well as an asset, but it's going down, all clear system, right, game? So we're going to credit the cash for $100,000. So what I want you to do is focus on the building account. That's why I provided with you how the building account will look on the ledger. So we have this building on the books at $100,000, which is the cost of the asset. And it's going to remain on the books at $100,000 throughout its life, gang. And we'll talk about a little more detail of that in just a second. But I want you to remember that first rule. Even though we're depreciating this particular building through time, it will remain on the books at the $400,000, which is the cost. Now, end of the year, year in, it's always time to make the adjustments before we make our financial statements, right? And so this adjustment, what we're going to do is we're going to depreciate. So the suppose it's a joke, depreciates the building for $10,000. So basically, we're going to depreciate the building. Anytime we depreciate an asset, an expense is created. And so we call that expense depreciation expense. So what we're going to do is increase that expense. So we're going to debit depreciation expense for $10,000. And we're going to put slash building so we can know which one we're depreciating. Then we're going to credit an account called accumulated depreciation slash building for 10000 as well. Now let's talk about this accumulated depreciation account. This accumulated depreciation account is actually a contra account. 
we're going to call it a contra account. Okay? So by definition, what is a contra account? A contra account is simply an account that affects another partnering account. So I like to consider it like a parent account and a baby account, right? So the contra account is always the baby account. It follows the parent account wherever it goes. And like most babies, they affect the parents. So that's how I like to consider accumulated depreciation. So it's a contra account. So we need to know what's the parent account. Well, obviously, the parent account is going to be whatever the asset that's being depreciated. So accumulated depreciation is a contra account to the asset depreciated. So in this particular circumstance, what asset are we depreciating? The building. So in all actuality, this accumulated depreciation account follows the building. So let me describe what accumulated depreciation does. Think of it like a piggy bank, but look at the key words within the title. Accumulated depreciation. Gain. Accumulated means to store, to stack, to build. So this account, what it does is it stores all of the depreciation that is taking place. Like a bank, right? It's storing all of the depreciation each year that's taking place with this building. So every year you depreciate the asset, the accumulated depreciation account gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? So... If we were to post this accumulated depreciation account, and I'm gonna just put AD slash building, it will sit on the credit side, right? And so we talked about the baby account, the contra account affecting the parent account. Well, we already understand how will accumulated depreciation affect the building. It could either increase it or decrease it. But you guys are smart and I got it. I put bet the house on it that you already know how the accumulated depreciation is going to affect the building. Bet, 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 mother it's going to decrease the value of the building, right? That's why it grows on the credit side. So, since it's an asset, which financial statement will building appear on? Well, that's easy as well. It will appear on a balance sheet, right? Because the balance sheet reports the accounting equation. And the accounting equation simply is assets equal to liabilities plus stockholders equity. So on the balance sheet is where we will see the effect of the depreciation of the actual building. So I'm not going to list all the assets. I'm just going to show you an example of how it will look with the building. So I'm going to list the building. And based on our previous T account, we saw the building was valued at $100,000. And because it has a contra account, a baby account that follow it, we will also always report the accumulated depreciation right under the building. And we know based on our ledger, our accumulated depreciation slash building is right now valued at $10,000. And so... We also know the effect will decrease our value of our accumulated depreciation. So thus far, we're gonna subtract the 10,000 from the $100,000 cost of the building. And anytime when you subtract accumulated depreciation from the cost of an asset, that will always give you book value. So now we're gonna report the book value of the building which happens to be ninety thousand dollars and this is how it will look on the balance sheet game so as you know throughout time accumulated depreciation will keep continuing increasing thus causing the building's book value on the balance sheet to go down so this was a perfect walkthrough illustration of how to properly account for depreciation and how it shows up on the balance sheet. Again, gang, it's always a pleasure sharing this information with you guys. And if this is making sense, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, or share with your friends for more ways to chase the bags. As always, gang, it's been a pleasure, and I will see you soon. Bags!